And that is the name of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. My name is Eric Nagel, and joining me always is my buddy Matt, Geek Stuff OG on the Twitter and Instagram. That's right. And uh, I am E Rock Radio on the Twitter and the Instagram there. If you want to be part of the show, we've got a lot to do tonight. We are pretty much sort of going full length today. That's right. It's Only... been a while since we did this. Yeah, it, weeks and weeks, it feels like. Right. Well, we do have one little interview that we got to get to. That's but, right. Uh, other than that, we're going to be here for the, go the distance, there if you, you will. 866-969-1969 is the uh, phone number if you want to be part of the program, as they call it. The kids call it the program. Is that, is that how the kids say it? Uh, they, that's how they do it. Uh, we have a lot to do, a lot to talk about, a lot to give away. Um, I've been tweeting obsessively about this stuff. It's stacking up in the office, well, people. Lots of photos. I'm trying to give it to you. You are. You do a good time. Uh, you go, do a good job trying to give it away. Right. <laughs> You'd think. Uh, you, you could actually give it away. No, people do uh, actually come in for this, but uh, all of a sudden, then they send us more. Well, that's and then a good I'm like, thing okay, too. cool. I gave all this away. No, there's more. All right, well, I'll give that away as well. Uh, if you haven't seen on the Twitter, Iraq Radio on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, uh, we'll tell you right here on the air because not everybody is uh, that socially inept. So the kids say program, but they're not. Uh, but they're not socially. Well, we may have savvy. older listeners oh, that okay. don't do social media. All right, I understand. Like for in ca- an, ex- an example, for the older listeners. Yes. Um, a little later on the program, we're going to be talking to the creator of WKRP in Cincinnati. Right. Hugh Wilson will be uh, on the phone. Uh, if you don't know what that show is, then you're under thirty. <laughs> Maybe you're under thirty-five. But if you're uh, over thirty-five, you know this show it was a huge hit in the late seventies into the eighties and on syndication. It was one of the things that piqued my interest in radio as a child and wanted to get into this business. And, and I'm going to say, uh, having watched a little bit of it in, in prep for for the interview that I knew right. was coming up. Uh, it it kind of holds up, unlike some other shows. I feel like it still kind of holds up. Well, it holds up in two different ways. If you work in the business, some of the nitpicking and the fighting that goes on in there still happens to this day, no sure. matter what business you're in, uh, what company you're in for the radio business. Uh, all these things are happening. As far as the social humor and uh, the humor of the day, it's there, but it's not overpowering where they're talking about Reagan or Nixon or Ford or, you know, where it's just obviously dated. And if you're not part of that time, you're not going to laugh at it. There are jokes just about, you know, basic human um, interactions where like, okay, that is still funny to this day. Yeah, that that still kind of applies. And look, it was formulaic sitcom sort of comedy, but it still applies in a lot of regards. It was I was kind of happy, I guess. Because so many things, we, we've talked about it before, but so many things, you go back and you watch them and they're like, oh, Horrible. oh God, why, why am I watching them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even Thundercats. It's like, why? What happened? But but anyway, so it was nice to know that it holds so up a little bit. So we have um, uh, DVD sets, uh, the brand new DVD sets from Shout Factory of WKRP. Now, what's interesting about these new sets is they got all the licensing back to the music that they used originally on the, on the television right. program. They used real rock acts. And when they were making fun of disco, real disco acts. But they didn't have the uh, the foresight to see that in syndication, or that maybe they would release it on VHS in the 80s, and, and DVDs, and, and what have you, that they still needed rights for that. Sure. So when it went into syndication, and went on these box sets and everything, they had to pull the music and use generic production music in there and it sounded horrible it's one of the things that kept the uh they kept the wonder years off of uh dvd for so long because they was couldn't music get the rights, rights clearance yeah. right so now they got you know thanks to shout factory and everybody else involved they got all the music clearance done and um i'm plowing through the uh box set and i'm halfway through season two and it's funny to hear when you hear the rolling stones and the kinks and then they go to captain and Tennille for a gag <laughs> you know and you're like this wasn't there when, you know, they originally put all this stuff out. So we have the, a lot of those to give away. Um, say you're a parent. Holidays right. are coming up, especially Thanksgiving, and you got to drive to the family. You want to throw a DVD in the back of the car there to shut the kids up. We've got uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman on Blu-ray, DVD, all that stuff Correct. for you, courtesy of, uh, of DreamWorks and 20th Century Fox. We've got Bren. Now, this is something from our time period, maybe teenage time period, Animaniacs. Released uh, Wacko's Wish first time on DVD, which is kind of cool for the adults and the kids. We have those to give away as well. And uh, I was debating about this, if people would love it, and I think they would. So I'm going to give away sets of Pee-wee's Playhouse. Who doesn't love Pee-wee's Playhouse? You don't know. Sometimes you run into people who's like, I never got into Pee-wee Herman. Like, I don't, I don't know, get that shit. I don't know what he's doing. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he confirmed recently that there's another movie moving forward. I think he's finally able to move forward with it. I would love that. 
the the first Pee Wee movie. Uh, well, the, if you go way back, the first Pee Wee special, right, was great, and then we got Pee Wee Spice. But the first Pee Wee movie directed by Tim Burton, I mean, that's Pee Wee's Big Adventure is like that's like a cult classic, right? I, you know what? I don't even know if I didn't like Big Top Pee Wee the second one. I don't remember much of it. I know yeah. I saw it once. It, it, it was weak compared was. to Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Well, if you're a Pee Wee fan, we have those to give away. Sure. And if also, you know, we had him on the program early on, Weird Al Yankovic, who yep. had, uh, you know, number one album with mandatory fun. Now he has UHF on Blu ray for the first time. So we're going to have those as, uh, as well. Do they have to drink away. from the fire hose? I wish we could. Damn. I wish we could. That would be so awesome. Can we do Wheel of Fish, perhaps, in order, to give, the, in, in order to give them away? And then uh, get a gift card to Spatula City. There you go. So Where lots to spatulas. give away, and uh, we've got some stuff we want to talk about here, so let's get going with that. It's, uh, look, on the East Coast here, it's pretty cold. It's, uh, it's pretty freaking chilly. It was under 40 all day today. It was freezing. It was windy. Rest of the country, wherever you are, especially our uh, listeners out on the West Coast there, you've got some good weather, unless, I guess, yeah. the Pacific Northwest. But if you're out in California and Arizona, you're living it up at 70. But it was still 60 degrees like four or five days ago, and then that damn polar vortex returned. I, look, I'm and, not buying into that either. And, and, the, the weather <laughs> services just want something to, you know, grab a headline. Sure. That's why they started naming snowstorms, <laughs> because it was so popular with hurricanes. Right. Now, snowstorms have to be named. They're even naming tornadoes now well auntie m it's it's it happens no it doesn't happen it's <laughs> bullshit it's trying to just you know capitalize create, you know a twitter buzz a hashtag or something that they can put on the front page or the, uh, the on the bottom third of the screen there saying you know snowstorm gabriel is coming well seriously last winter you could not turn on any news program comedy news program radio station without someone mentioning polar vortex at least once every five to ten minutes so Do you remember in i'll say the early 90s when they started publicizing el nino yes right and became a uh, saturday night live skit <laughs> uh, skit with uh chris farley uh -huh. as el nino because all right, maybe it existed, but nobody talked about it. It wasn't real scientific measurement of, of weather, and then it beca became a thing now. That's what they're trying to do with snowstorms and trying to do it with tornadoes by naming this thing just so they can have a, a name to blame for when you know a tragedy happens. Well, I just hope the snow stays away for a little while longer. I can take the cold. I'm not ready for the snow yet. I, well, it's, it sort of happened. We got a flurry. I was driving in on Thursday morning, and I saw a van from a minivan from Pennsylvania coming into the with city with snow on with it. With snow right? on the top yeah, of it, they they got it. Our, our like kind of immediate area did, got a little flurry, but nothing too crazy. So, but it is cold out, it and is. for us here on the East Coast, I'm excited that it's wool cap weather. That's right. So I can stop having to comb my hair. I'll wash my hair, but it's stop combing my hair and throw on a wool cap. I don't have to worry about combing my hair. So well, what left you have of your hair? <laughs> That's right. Um, what else did I want to mention here real quick? Oh, uh, Big Hero 6 was number one domestically in the box office. Yeah, it beat out Interstellar. Right. Um, I didn't beat him out internationally. No. But in, domestically in the United States was number one. Uh, last weekend, ran a whole bunch of interviews that we did at Comic-Con for Big Hero 6. It's up on SiriusXM On Demand if you want to check that out. Also, if you're on SiriusXM uh, Sirius On Demand, if you're not radio filing enough, if you're a big radio fan with the WKRP guy going to be on a little bit later, this week was historic. Yes. Thursday on Opie and Jim when the great Artie Lang came on to the program. Absolutely. Very few moments left in my radio career that I'm like, oh my God, moments, or uh, this is going to be historical, and this was one of them. If you haven't heard it, it's rerunning through the weekend, or you can go to Sirius XM. Uh, Sirius, why am I saying it so wrong? Sirius know. XM On Demand. I'm thinking faster than I can speak. Well, slow down. It's and okay. We have time tonight. Remember, not as do. many interviews. You're right. i got to get used to that. <laughs> Sirius XM On Demand. You can check it out there and check out uh, Artie Lang's appearance with Opie and Jim, which was great. I'm still, no, I still see people online talking about it. And, uh, Artie was really cool, talked about his life, talked about, uh, you know, the incident when he, you know, stabbed himself. And, uh, the Bob Saget Rose story is amazing. Yeah. It was great listening. I mean, it really was. A fan of, if you're a fan of radio in general, if you're a fan, you know, long time ONA listener, it, it, it was, it was a good listen no matter what. So. So go check out that and, uh, my program from last week. Actually, screw my program from last week. Just go and listen to Artie Lang. Right. On Opie and Jimmy there. Uh, let's go to Jacob in Maryland. Jacob. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. How are you, going? sir? I'm doing well. Hey, I'm a meteorologist. I thought I could answer some questions for you guys if you had any. 
Why are you naming stupid storms? <laughs> so it's not the Weather Service that's naming storms. It's actually the Weather Channel. And uh, they have various reasons. I think the bottom line is it's probably a marketing ploy. Uh, exactly. It, it, is it, it's just so they could have a headline. Uh, you know, a Twitter hashtag is pretty valuable nowadays. So I think that that's probably what it boils down to. I can't believe the Weather Channel is still even around, let alone sort of relevant that it could dictate something like naming storms. I think the last time I put on the Weather Channel was a couple of weeks ago. They have a sh program on there called Two Fat Guys in the Woods, I think it's called. Have yeah, you seen yeah. On the show? Weather Channel? On the Weather Channel. And it's like yeah. a survivalist show. They take like a fat guy and a couple of his fat friends and they put him out in the woods with a survivalist who teaches him how to like start a fire with a, a condom filled with water and they focus the sun's right it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen but i was i was glued to MacGyver it, when it in the on, woods sort of with fat yeah. guys they they actually that was a big controversy uh that they had with direct tv direct tv took them off the air for a while because they're adding all these reality shows and getting away from the core of weather but really that's why a lot of meteorologists at least my age got into weather as we grew up watching the weather channel so it is kind of sad to see you uh, know it, it no, turned that what, way what jacob just said I didn't even realize applied to me until he just said that. I grew up watching the Weather Channel. Um, despite what Sam Roberts likes to uh, say about my life, I did not grow up in Florida, right. right? But I did vacation in Florida a lot, and it was in July and August, which is, you know, the big chunk of hurricane season. Are you from West Palm? No, I'm not, and no one talked to you. <laughs> um, that was Adrian, by the way. Uh, so... I'd be down there in, uh, like, New Smyrna Beach, West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, somewhere down there in, in that area. I had family all over the place. And hurricanes would hit. I remember and uh, being down there for Hurricane Andrew. Right. Which was the big one that, that fucked up Miami, you know, hardcore. I used to watch this guy on the Weather Channel, who I guess is the legendary guy when it comes to anything weather now. Uh, Jim Cantori. Is he the old guy with the mustache? No, no, Jim... He's not the old guy. Um, no, there was an old, there was a thin old guy with a mustache who was on any time. He was their hurricane expert. I want to say John. I think his name was ah, oh, damn it, John Neath. It might it might be, but it was an old guy with a mustache. He was a skinny dude. Anytime something with a hurricane came up, he was the expert was the that everybody went to. Yeah, All right. and they watched. They found the numbers where people were watching for this guy on the Weather Channel just because of his hurricane coverage. He was Absolutely. never out in the storm. He was just at the center that they, uh, you know, bring all the information into. And I think the Weather Channel still does a really good product when it comes to national stories, whether it is, you know, the historic toll that we're seeing or, or tornado outbreaks, whatever. But the day-to-day -day where it's kind of boring weather, that's where they lose their viewers, and that's where they have to supplement it with some of these uh, reality shows or, or some of the stuff, you know, two fat guys in the woods or whatever it's called, you know. That's why they have to supplement it a little bit, and they're losing that core audience that helped build them into what they were. So, huh. yeah. Well, they'll find a way to survive. Uh, Jacob, the guy's name was John Hope. Okay. Do you know who, the, who I'm talking about? I actually don't. Okay. Uh, yeah. He is, uh, I'm trying to pull up a, a photo right here for, uh, for Matt to look at here, but look at him. He looks like a science oh God, professor. Yeah. He looks right? kind of like a Muppet, actually. Right. Horseshoe <laughs> bald with thick glasses, but it had a um, Ned Flanders, but pure white style mustache. And he was the guy, and that was before NBC owned the Weather Channel. So <laughs> the, he was on the Weather Channel, but then every news network would talk to this guy because he was the guy down at the Hurricane Center. It's in Miami, right? Yes, it is. Right. Yeah. So down there, they would talk to that guy. Everybody knew this guy, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, my God, I grew up watching the fucking Weather Channel. But stop naming storms. You don't, hey, hey, you don't need don't a storm name. You don't need a storm name for the snow, for the tornadoes. You don't even really need it for the hurricanes. It just goes back, you know, a century that they've been doing this, but it's, it's stupid to do that, too. So it, I would argue that with, with hurricanes that it is useful because it does give people a reference. You know, if five hurricanes hit... Uh, like in 2005, it was a pretty busy year. You're able to identify very easily, okay, Hurricane Wilma, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, with snowstorms, it gets lost a little bit. Um, and, and I would, I would agree with you that, that that's probably not necessary. Now, the only way that they name tornadoes is they name it after the city sort of that it hit. So, you know, the Moore tornado of, of 2012 or, um, the Huntsville tornado in 2011. 
that way you know exactly what storm and or what that I understand that like when when it dev- devastates Oklahoma City right and they right. say those you know the the tornado of Oklahoma City 2013 was it 12 somewhere on there yep and I get that as a news reference and a historical reference but when they're doing it forward saying you know um blizzard Joe is Blizzard coming on jo- Sunday. Yeah, Blizzard <laughs> Joseph is, is coming down from Canada, and it's going to hit the polar vortex, and New York's going to be fucked. And Snowmageddon. It's like, stop with the names, stop with the fear-mongering, and, just, and it's what Jacob said, hashtag is so important nowadays. It is. Yep. If, hey, if you guys get a chance when you go to break or whatever, check out Lewis Black's story about naming storms. He has a bit about it. It's... 100% spot on. I am writing this down. Uh, so am I. <laughs> Lewis Black. Do you happen to know what album? Or is I it don't. one of his specials? It, it, I think it's on one of his specials. If you just Google uh, Lewis Black, you know, weather, yeah. it will definitely come up. The YouTube probably has it. Yeah, yeah, the interweb. Jacob, yeah, exactly. thank you so much uh, for calling here. I'd like to do something nice for you if I could, if I have anything that you may actually want here. Uh, did you get to hear what I was, uh, what I listed earlier about what we're giving away? Is there anything that uh, appeals to you here? Uh, you know, I'll... Uh how about the WKRP stuff? That'd be cool. You want to, all right, I will hook you up with that. Uh, you have a WKRP in Cincinnati, brand new uh, box. It's season one DVD set from Shout Factory. Perfect. There you go. Thanks, guys. All right, Thank Jacob, I'm um, putting you on hold. Line three back there, and he gets the WKRP set. Uh, well, this kind of ties into a couple of different things we're talking about. Let's talk to Erica in Iowa. Erica. Hi, Iraq. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm, 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 I'm snowed in. Where in Iowa are you? Well, it doesn't matter you're in Iowa. Yeah, That's bad out. enough. Check this out. My, my husband is 40 miles away um, seeing Henry Rollins without me. Because he is he performing or is he in. doing spoken word? Because spoken word. Spoken okay, then word. you're you're fine. You you've got the better deal. <laughs> <laughs> if if he was down doing a black flag, you know, I'd be oh, like, well, your yeah, your husband's a dick. But right. I think he spared you. No, 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 no. We would probably crawl through snow to see Black Flag, but you why know. did he ditch you? In the, why did he ditch you to go see Henry Wallens? Well, because he was on a panel for some arts thing in Cedar Rapids this afternoon, and then you the know, black the ice hit, so he couldn't come home and get me to go see Henry Rollins. Well, that is just very selfish of him. And that's so I called you, because I love Pee Wee. Pee Wee? Yes, Pee Wee! You're a big fan of Pee Wee, Herman? Big fan. Big fan. That sounds dirty. Well, I'm going to give you a copy of Pee Wee's Playhouse Season 1 and 2 on DVD, thanks to our friends at Shout Factory. Um, not because you got to uh, miss Henry Rollins, but, but because, because you're in Iowa and your husband's and a dick. look at the map, and you'll see us right there in the middle of the blue. All right. That's us. All right, I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, we'll send you a box set, all right? I love your show. I love your show. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all right. Light a fire, drink some wine, and... Uh, and Enjoy warm. some Pee Wee. There you go. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, line five there. Uh, she gets Pee Wee Herman there. Uh, let's go to John in Philly. John, and if you want to be a part of the program, 866-969-1969. John, how are you? Uh, pretty good. Yourself? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, I I like your show. I, I saw uh, Big Hero 6 uh, last week on Saturday. It was the first movie my daughter has ever gone to see like in a movie theater. She's okay. about to turn free, so uh, we tried to go to the earliest possible show so she wouldn't freak out just in case. How did she do? Uh, she actually, she was completely quiet the whole movie. Uh, there, there is, Have you seen the movie? I have seen uh, almost all of it. I haven't seen the entire thing of Big Hero 6, but I am going to go out to the theater and see the rest of it. I only saw what uh, Disney was able to send me. Uh, for the interviews there, but I do want to go okay. see it. In fact, we were just talking about that on the way in today. We uh, Matt has a son who's about the same age as your daughter yeah, he's, there. He's three and a half, and I, I actually was thinking about taking him this weekend as his big first theater experience, and I was a little concerned that he might not be able to handle it yet, but I mean, clearly yeah. your daughter, you said, right, was a, is a little bit younger than that, so so maybe I'll give it a yeah. go tomorrow. Yeah, my daughter turns three in January. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, the only thing that was a little scary, and it wasn't even scary, like, freaking out, but you see the bad guy, the kabuki guy, and uh, he's got the, the things that shoot out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I know what he's talking about, yeah. Okay, well, 
when I would look over at her while she's watching that, she just had her arms like cross or crisscrossed across her face. Oh, all right. So, so it was a little it was a little creepy for her. Yeah, my son well, would probably be alright with that. He likes to throw shit at my face, so it's so weird what you think him. when you take well not even take for granted, I mean you're older, but when you watch some things and go, That's not scary at all, they'll be fine and then you see kids get, you know, terrified over these little things. Yeah, well, well she wasn't terrified. She was peeking through her arms, but you know, it was like her her comfort of hiding behind her arms. Right, right. It was adorable, I thought. Well, I, now, now, John, you, you've inspired me. Maybe, maybe I will go this week and, and take my son to uh, to see the film. And stay so, after the credits, I understand. Show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to spoil that. Yeah, don't yeah, spoil no, it, no. but I understand you have to stay till the end. Well, yeah, if you're a fan. Right. Of Marvel. Of yeah. Marvel, right. That's what I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I used to love Animaniacs as a kid. Right. Uh, growing up. I'm I'm only 33, so I'm right in your age range. I used to watch that show constantly, like back in uh, I want to say maybe middle school, maybe. Okay, okay. Animaniacs was one of those shows. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with it, um, Animaniacs was one of those shows that uh, was put out right after Steven Spielberg put out Tiny Toons, which was a new take on the Looney Tunes universe right. uh, with. Uh, kid version of the characters without being their kids correct like, right so you'd have a little tasmanian devil a little bugs bunny a little daffy duck whatever they were just kid versions but they weren't the kids of uh, of the original characters and they weren't the kids uh, of the original characters so that did really well and they spun off animaniacs which was supposed to be a take on old old school uh Warner Brothers universe, right? Where these uh, characters were locked up for so many years because they couldn't control them, but they were very um, Three Stooges and Marx Brothers style of humor. It was definitely a different level of humor than than Tiny Toons was. But Animaniacs was interesting because I think it appealed to multiple age ranges, whereas Tiny Toons there was a lot of adult jokes right. in there. Although I would still go back and watch Tiny Toons now, but but I think Tiny Toons was clearly geared towards a younger audience, where I think Animaniacs. It really kind they were of sneaking skirted in, that line. They were sneaking yeah. in a lot of dick jokes uh, for adults as a kid's show where somebody would say something sexually suggestive and one of them would lean over into the screen and kiss his hand and wave to you and go, good night, folks. Like, that was the fucking sex joke. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't do the show anymore. Um, all the hello nurse stuff. Right. I mean, that was all its own Staring form of innuendo. Yeah. And, and all that. Yeah. Which was what original Looney Tunes sure. was when it aired in the movie theaters uh, back for our grandparents when they were little skits and stuff. They'd watch newsreels, they'd watch cartoons, and then get into the movie there. Right. So, uh, Animaniacs was another Steven Spielberg uh, project. Did well, but I don't think got the push that it deserved. It was there. It was part of the. It was Fox Kids Afternoon thing, yeah. and then it was Saturday mornings. And I just don't. They didn't do followed up with a lot of merchandising, and I don't think it got a big push. It was weird. I think with Animaniacs, like select characters made it bigger than others. Like Tiny Toons kind of was its own package, but because Animaniacs was really little vignettes of different characters who didn't often interact. Right. Cross storyline, right? Like Pinky and the Brain, for example, took off huge, and there was tons of Pinky and the Brain merchandise, yeah, clothing and merchandise, and like backpacks and lunchboxes and all that kind of crap, right? But like, you never saw Slappy the Squirrel stuff, or uh, you very, you didn't even see Wacko Yakko and dot stuff quite as much it um, took a page so, out of heathcliff where you know monday through thursday you had heathcliff and the junkyard cats and then on friday was riff raff and the junkyard cats. Right, right. but riff raff and heathcliff never met they were two separate stories in the same show yeah it was it was animaniacs was different in that regard so anyway animaniacs anyway. great show yes. and i'm assuming you're a fan based on the fact that you said you loved animaniacs so uh yeah. john what i'd like to do is i'd like to give you a copy of uh, animaniacs wacko's wish it's the first time it was ever released and especially on DVD, uh, it's exciting. It's a big Christmas thing. I think you're going to like it. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. I'll put you on hold there. And uh, there we go. John on line two gets that. Ralphie in Pennsylvania. Ralphie, how are you? Hey, e Rock, How you doing? Doing uh, good. First, your first time uh, calling into your show, I just wanted to say, uh, about uh, a couple of days ago, we had this uh, high school observer come in. And we were just, we were actually just talking about cartoons. It's just funny that you brought it up. And, uh, we talked about Beavis and Butthead. She had no idea who Beavis and Butthead was at all. And it was just like, 
what? And I'm 26 years old, and I was like, devastating to me. He's like, how do you know Beavis and Butthead? Well, and then, to, to, hold on a second. To be fair with Beavis and Butthead, um, Beavis and Butthead was known to a generation because it was on MTV. Right. But Beavis True. and Butthead was not part of like a an after school cartoon block or a Saturday morning cartoon block. So unless you were a certain age range and you watched MTV, you got it. But it wasn't universally out there for uh, all kids to find accidentally when they caught home from school or, or home for the weekend. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I thought about that, so I was like, well, what about Ren and Stimpy? Another show similar to it, you know, whatever. Still, I had no idea about Ren and Stimpy either. And I just, just hearing you guys talk about all the old classic shows brings you right back, and then it's just like, wait, I'm getting old, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you're, 30, you're 33, I'm 26, I feel like I'm 100 fucking 8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a weird, there's a weird... <sighs> I don't want to say generation gap because that term's overused, but there's a weird rift, I'll say, where obviously you're not going to be into the same thing that your parents are. Or if you have brothers and sisters that are anywhere four years older than you or more, there's you know a little tear in, in the generation there where they like some things that you don't and vice versa. But I've never seen such a, a, a gap. I mean, you have to use the term. Such a difference in, in generations between people in their 20s to kids uh, in their teens to late teens where even they don't get along and like the same stuff anymore and those are supposed to overlap I think in regards to like cartoons and programming though, I think a lot of that is technology based. You know, for us, like Saturday morning cartoons was a big deal, right? right. You didn't watch a lot of right. cartoons during the week. Now you want to watch a cartoon, you go to F Fios On Demand or whatever your cable on demand, you have access to Nick Jr. and the Cartoon Network and Disney XD, whatever. You can pull up whatever cartoon you want to watch whenever you want to watch it and you can watch it in the morning, at night, you know, before homework, right? It, it, it wasn't like, I remember Saturday mornings was a huge deal. It was. I would wake up early. I'd go and get my bowl of cereal. Like I'd sit on the couch and like that was like my whole Saturday was planned around Saturday morning cartoons. And I feel like that's no longer a big deal. So it's almost kind of like they take advantage of the fact that they have access to it. Yeah. Well, that, it, that you're spoiled by the change in the times and like you said, technology there. So you can't really fault the kid for that. But it just seems weird that even growing up, you and I, right, right, in the right. in the eighties. You knew what your parents liked. Oh, sure. Okay? You knew what your parents watched, the movies. Uh, you knew what was important back then and during their time. The, the, the movie, Dallas. The movie stars, the TV stars. You knew all that stuff. Didn't mean you liked them. Like, my dad loved 50s doo-wop. Drove me fucking nuts. Because <laughs> yeah. I was stuck it with it in the car listening to, like, the, 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 the uh, what was it, Don K. Reed's doo-wop shop on CBS <laughs> FM at, you know, at night. And I know all the songs. I don't sit there and listen to them, but if it came on, I, I was like, oh yeah, I know this, I know that. So you knew what your parents uh, used to like, and you knew what was important as far as pop culture goes. Right. Nowadays, oh, yeah. you, kids don't have anything... To, uh, don't have any uh, idea past their birth date of what was important, and I'm, t I'm sounding like an old dude here, and I'm not complaining, it's lawn. just an observation, no, no. that kids don't know anything past their birth date, and it's not just like, oh, it's not cool to know that stuff, it's they have no knowledge of this stuff, because nobody brings it up anymore, you don't have Brady Bunch rerunning on television, I watched Brady Bunch as a kid, and I know that was on when, you know, my mom was yeah. growing up, and she loved that show, but they, they don't have that anymore. Years. Yeah, the, you know, the Wonder Years, and, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I knew the theme song to All in the Family. I mean, they're the same kind of a thing. You talk about doo-wop and everything. I mean, yeah. Like, those kinds of shows where, you know, they were, and you know, ahead of their time, I mean, especially. But now, you know, you kind of watch these shows, and they're just not as good as they used to be, I think. You know, anyways, but even then... To I mean, be fair, a lot of people would say those sh uh, shows are not as good as, as they remember as being a kid, because I know my dad would say sure. that. Um, but, but then again, he liked the Honeymooners, and the Honeymooners are just awesome no matter what decade you're in. That's right. And they also, you know, and Ralphie was in it, so I mean, that's a great name. So, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Ralphie. Uh, um, we're going to move on here. Uh, I'd like to hook you up with something if I could. Uh, does anything I have appeal to you, or do you, would you like me to reread it? Uh, what do you, uh, you can reread it, I guess. I, the only thing I, I remember is the Mr. Peabody DVD, and I really don't have that. So uh, what do you got? Uh, we have Peabody and Sherman on Blu-ray there. We have uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse Seasons 1 and 2. Uh, the 25th anniversary of UHF. It's also the first time it's on Blu-ray there. Uh, WKRP in Cincinnati Season 1, Animaniacs. What can I do for you? 
I'll go with the 25th uh, anniversary, I guess. All right. Uh, the 25th anniversary of UHF. It's the first time it's on Blu-ray. One of my favorite movies. I know people look at it as a, as a throwaway movie a or a piece classic. of classic. I love this movie. I went in 1989 yep. and saw it opening weekend, despite the fact that everybody else went to see Batman. <laughs> I went and saw UHF. <laughs> but the next day I went to see Batman. Of course. I just picked and choose what was you know my, my go-to <laughs> seat here. Um, it's that. And it also has uh, Al's 2004 comic. Con panel. Oh, nice. The whole thing is on there oh. as well, courtesy of our friends at Shout Factory. Uh, I'm going to put you on hold here and uh, we'll hook you up, all right? I love Shout Factory. Perfect. Thank you, thank you so much. You rock. Have a good night, guys. No problem, Ralphie. It was great talking to you. 866 969 1969 if you want to talk to us here on the program. Uh, David in Ohio. David, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. good how are you David? on a Friday? Oh, Saturday night. Sorry. Saturday. I'm time traveling. Oh, oh, well, just uh, working right now, listening to your show. I, I was just, I'm sorry for both. <laughs> yeah, I was just on back. Uh, was remembering uh, TGIF, you know the the dinosaurs and Family Matters. Not the mama, sir. I Not love dinosaurs. I I wish that they would just bring that, those shows back. Like now, the only thing they have is you know the an, animation nomination on Sundays, but. You know, they don't have the cartoons on Saturdays anymore or anything like that. We touched on this not too long ago. There was some articles that came out making a big deal that there was no Saturday morning cartoons right. anymore. And that was because I think the programming block was called Velocity on the CW, which is technically a, a broadcast channel. Excuse me. Um, was pulling the last of their, ch of their children's programming on, uh, on Saturday mornings. And people were like, is this a big deal? Or how Are there outrage? But it's like, why? You know, it was set for us growing up because we didn't have all the outlets that you have now. Right, like I was saying. Had we had all that, no one would give a shit about Saturday morning. They'd right, be like, yeah. I'm watching Nickelodeon on my iPad, and, and I get Disney. What's the one, the, the new hipper Disney? Uh, Disney XD. Disney XD. Has some cool programming yeah. and such like that. So you'd be watching all those things. You can't watch it now because it's that gone, but who up. cares? You wouldn't even be up yet because you'd still be playing your Xbox 360 or your One or whatever. <laughs> right. right. Which, by the way, I think I'm going to have to uh, get one of those th those next gen platforms. You could say it. I am. The Xbox <laughs> One is awesome. The I have a One and it's it's amazing. So well, as, as if I learned this correctly, I've started to see trends that. Uh, one genera one next generation console is for a certain group of people, and the other generation console is for another group of people. I want a PS4. Yeah. Uh, you're not on the right line for that. <laughs> you're supposed to be an Xbox One person. Nope, I've always been a PlayStation guy. Uh, I think PS4s are more over at Shade 45, well, and Xbox One is on the OP radio. Then I'm heading over to Shade. Okay. <laughs> well, if I got that right, I think I'm going to be asking to maybe get an Xbox One for uh, for the holidays. You're going to hope Santa Claus brings you one? I'm going to hope Santa brings me uh, does right and brings me an Xbox Remember, One. Remember, carrot sticks for the reindeer and cookies and milk for Santa, and you'll get whatever the hell you want. Well, if he's late, that... I'm eyeballing that shit. <laughs> I love snickerdoodles. Um, David, I'm going to hook you up here with something that was a good call. What could I? Uh, what do I have here that would interest you, sir? Do you want Pee Wee? Do you want Mr. Peabody? Do you want UHF, WKRP, Animaniacs? Uh, I definitely want the Animaniacs. Animaniacs, it is. Wacko's Wish. It's the first time ever being released. Thanks to our friends at Shout Factory there. I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, David, uh, line two, we'll get that. Who do you want to go to now? Anybody look interesting? Um, 866-969-1969 is the phone number to get in touch with us on the program. Yeah, look, I mean, if you... I, well, I would, I would disagree with there's no animation on TV anymore. I would George or Gene in Chicago. I, I think there's plenty of animation on TV. It's just available at different times and in different formats. What up, Gene? Hey, how you doing? Is that short for you, Gene? <laughs> no. Oh, it's just Gene uh, in general. Just Gene in general. No, it's just when I was much younger. I'm in my mid 40s now. Uh, cartoons were a really big deal. You, they had a special showing what cartoons were coming on, etc. I mean, my favorite cartoons growing up were like Johnny Quest and Thunder the Barbarian. Oh, sure. Okay, great stuff. But it seems that now, it, it, over time, it slowly degenerated into a toy commercial. And now there aren't even... I mean, I read the article about there's no Saturday morning cartoons anymore. Yeah, it's... The last, 
Who's the last holdout? C W the C W channel or whatever? No, C W was the yeah, was the ones that got rid of the velocity block and now there's no uh cartoon programming on broadcast television. But that you got a twenty four hour cartoon network, you know, and yeah, T B S runs a bunch of stuff. And and Disney still puts out some decent Boomer, stuff. Is Boomerang still a channel? Oh, I don't know. I used to love Boomerang. I, I believe it is. But shows like Phineas and Ferb, Gravity Falls, which are both on Disney and Disney XD, those are actually pretty good cartoons that, in my opinion, they feel a lot like the cartoons that I grew up with. Um, and, and I think they appeal to multiple age ranges, too, which is kind of weird. If you've never seen any of them, you, you think I'm crazy right now. But watch an episode of Phineas and Ferb or watch an episode of Gravity Falls. Um, and th- those are just the two that happen to well, pop up up off the top of my head but i think there's a lot of animation out there i think there's a lot of cartoons out there i think if they're just available at different times and in different formats that's all yeah well i mean in the 80s is when it started to go downhill with uh, all the toy commercials well of you know, course I mean, and I- mask and all gi joe and well that was that was that was Pretty much all Hasbro. <laughs> Hasbro, okay. Hasbro yeah, hit true. on Transformers, and they were like, "Holy shit, we could turn everything into a toy line and a TV show." And it was everything. You're right, you're right though, but a lot of that was a lot of that was Hasbro back in the day. Not yeah, that my, that stuff was bad. It was just that's what it was. My kids are in their like uh, late teens, early twenties now, and when they were little, I would seek out stuff on VHS for them. So they're big fans of like Johnny Quest, which, in my opinion was the greatest cartoon ever. Hold on. Really? You thought so? Because I, I watched some of the I old Johnny Quest. Quest. The, the adventures are good, but the dialogue's so horrible. The what? The dialogue is so horrible. Uh, I don't know. It's born of the Cold War. I, I, I would rather watch Herculoids violent. or Thundar over Johnny Quest. Real, that's not bad. Oh. I like Herculoids. That's all Hanna-Barbera, right? It is Hanna-Barbera. Right. Yeah. And if you were a big Johnny Quest fan, sir, have you discovered the Venture Brothers? Oh, yeah, I know that stuff. It's interesting. All right, well, Venture Brothers does make a lot of digs. It, it ripped off Johnny Quest's uh, story and theme, made it their own, but they take a lot of shots at Johnny Quest. Now, they always portray him as an old drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't oh, checked Roger it out, West. it's on Adult yeah. Swim, and all the DVDs are out. Check out the Venture Brothers. You'll really love one it. Of the best, one of the best that um, I'm an attorney by trade, and one of the best that you, you guys know Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. I yes, love it. Absolutely. Stephen Colbert. Oh, that stuff, that rule. The one where they made uh, Race and Dr. Quest a gay couple fighting over custody. <laughs> that is hilarious. There was another one where they made, uh, they thought that Fred Flintstone was a mafia don. <laughs> and they, they, they wind up, you know, putting him to trial and going to jail. And it turns out it was Barney Rubble pulling the strings the whole time. <laughs> like he That's woke funny. up and Dino's head was in the bed. You know what show was really good too? Um, uh, that kind of to me was in the same vein as, as Harvey uh, Birdman. Uh, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, when oh, it came back. That. That's and what he started was... that whole new generation yeah. of taking the old stuff and making it wacky and, and fucked up for uh, for a new audience. I still sing those Brack songs. Oh, I... Brack, the Brack show starring Brack, produced by Brack, whatever that was. That I have was... all the albums. Don't don't touch me. It's still one of my favorite Brack songs ever. That and driving down. Don't the... touch me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> don't touch me. If you haven't seen those albums, go on iTunes, download all of them, or check them out on YouTube. There's Absolutely. Some, okay. They did. He did a song with the Chieftains. Uh huh. If you don't know them, they're a uh, really the popular uh, Irish folk band. Irish. Yeah, and yeah, there's some great crossovers on those. But Coast to Coast was so hilarious. He had some great guests on. I remember they were he had Beck on in one episode. I mean, it was just some really bizarre. That was a really bizarre show, Coast to Coast. It is. And the, but the old Space Ghost was good too. But it was just no, interesting to see those characters doing that thing. Old Space Ghost is horrible. If you ever watched it, when uh, like USA used to have uh, USA Cartoon Express, right? And I think that was on the weekends too. Uh, they used to show a lot of uh, uh, of. Uh, Space, Space Ghost, Ghost. Har- and uh, Birdman, right. and uh, all those c- characters that never really became anything. Plastic Man, and I Turbo Team, the man. kid who would get hot water t- thrown on him and it, turn into a car tur- for some reason. He looked like a go-bot, yeah. Right. When I, when I was growing up, uh, I grew up in the Detroit area, and when I was growing up, uh, you still had regional television, and that's one of the highlights when you were a little kid, is to travel to go see your cousin. To see what the local shows were and what was on in the afternoon, etc. Right. You guys remember like Ultraman and Johnny Psycho and his flying robot? I remember Ultraman. I don't remember the other one though. Okay, well, I will never, we'll never forget that they used to this little blurb before the show came on because the point of the show was 
was a little kid who had like a giant transformer robot and he would go and like jump off a cliff and the robot would come catch him. Okay. Okay. So they would do this little blur before it goes, this show is pretend. <laughs> so we want you to remember that the actors are just pretending. Oh, Jesus. So I guess kids were, like, jumping off their roof waiting for the, the robot to catch them. So the lesson is kids have been stupid always. That's <laughs> really yeah. what it is. It's not just a modern phenomenon. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, Gene, okay. we got we got to move on here. Um, I want to hook you up with something, but I don't know if you're one of the gentlemen that would enjoy anything that I have to offer you here. I w- would love to have Pee-wee's Playhouse. You want Pee-wee's Playhouse? There you go. Then, yeah. sir, you got it. Um, I'm going to put you on hold. Line 7, Gene in Chicago got a copy of Pee-wee's Playhouse, Seasons 1 and 2 on DVD. He sounds like a guy who works in waste management. Oh, jeez. So I'm going to be nice to Gene in Chicago. Uh, going back to uh, staying at the end. And, uh, uh, of movies and credits and stuff because they put stuff on there. Let's go to David in Florida. David, where in Florida are you? Gainesville. Upper East Side. Just about two hours north of Orlando. Right, okay. In the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, about 65 degrees and, and clear here. You're the last okay. stop before crossing the Georgia line. Yeah, pretty much. We're about uh, 75 miles south of Georgia. Look at me so. going local for Florida. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, well, David, up there. what did you want to talk about with the credits there? Well, you're, you're, I know you're a movie aficionado. I was wondering, when did they start putting the hidden stuff in the movies? I was trying to think back where you'd actually sit there and watch the credits, and someone would come out and say, are you still here? Why are you watching? Go home and... Um, well, the, uh, what you're saying, what you're saying right there is a reference to Ferris Bueller at the end when That's the credits it. are done and he's like, you're still here, go home. Yeah. But what, what's been going on for so many years, I think the seventies is when this started, is they would show either extra footage or, um, uh, outtakes and, and fuck ups and deleted scenes and run it during the commercial, so you had something t- extra to watch. It was like bonus movie. Right. Uh, I remember exactly. being in the theater seeing uh, Great Outdoors and with uh, okay. John Candy and Dan Aykroyd, and at the end, yeah. while the credits are, are going, they're playing that blues song that I can't uh, remember off the top of my head, but they're all in the bar and they're dancing around through the entire length of the credits. So they always had that, but I think in the last... 10, 15 years is when they started to make it where you got to watch the credits at certain parts because there's pieces that add to the movie or for the next movie. Right. I think that's relatively a new thing. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Stuff in the credits is not new, but stuff that leads to, you know, gives you hints of what you just saw and what's still to come, I think that is fairly new, say the last 10 to 15 years. Maybe I'm wrong. Somebody knows the correct answer, 866-969-1969. I'm glad you told me first. Bueller would have driven me nuts all night thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to hook you up here. David, what would you like? Anything uh, appeal to you here? WKRP. You want WKRP? Nice. Yeah, I'd love that. All That'd right, WKRP in Cincinnati, season one, DVD uh, is going Thanks to you. Um, I don't think we're going to have time to talk to Mr. Wilson tonight. Oh, no. So we may have to bump it to next week. I do apologize. We're running out of time here. Phone banks are lit, and I kind of just want to keep going on with keep this. Keep rolling with it. All right. Uh, Mr. Wilson will understand, I he think. He will. I'll, I'll give him a call. Uh, we're good friends. You'll sweet talk him. Uh, let's talk to Carly in Louisiana. Carly. Hey, Eric. Hi, how are you? I have a question. Okay. I'm good. I think you might be the only person who can help me. Oh, no. Yeah. What did I do now? (laughs) I have this argument with everyone. Okay. Well, everyone who might have watched The Tick. Okay. The Tick. The Tick. Yes. Wait, are you talking the, the TV show or the animated series? No, animated. Okay. On Fox, right? Right. It was part of the Fox Kids uh, Saturday morning. I could swear that the voice changed after about, I don't know, episode four. Hmm. I'm trying. The voice of the tick was a guy named Ben Undland? Endland? Not at first, Eric. I'm telling that crazy. I'm not crazy. Matt's looking it up right uh, now here for yeah, you. Yeah, because I, I, don't remember, uh, I don't remember it changing. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying... Uh, and, and if it did change, it wasn't one of those, like, you know how Anthony used like to bring up the Fred, Fred, yeah. the Fred Flintstone and the fake Fred. Um, I don't recall the it's voice ever changing. It did. Now, didn't the tick start at night, first of all? Wasn't it at night? I don't remember the Tick starting at night. Tick was a comic book that got changed over into an animated series and then a short toy line with that. 
I'm not crazy, Eric. Okay. I remember right. this. So, so the voice of Arthur changed from season one to season two. Uh, it was right. uh, what Mickey Dolan's to Rob Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson was also right. uh, Wacko and a right. bunch of people in Animaniacs. But yeah. I'm seeing the same gentleman, Townsend Coleman, attributed to the Wrong. voice of the Tick. It's wrong. That is wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> it's, I have Townsend Coleman. Yeah, that, that's what I. That's what I see. You know okay. what? I will. Well, exp- my quest continues. I will explore that right. and hopefully have an answer for you next week. But I don't remember the Tick's voice changing. Because, you know, he hates broccoli, and yet, in a strange way, he is broccoli. <laughs> there you go. There's a little tick Good reference night, there for you. Thank Good night. You. Um, Thank what you I'm going to do, I'm going to hook you up with some uh, Animaniacs, Carla. Is that all good? That's a- I don't know what that was. That English? Did I? No, said, you're not no. speaking at all. Carly, I, I sound like I'm drunk. Uh, Carly, I'm going to hook you up with some Orson Animaniacs. Wells, so I'm going to love Animaniacs. You remember the Orson Welles? It's so funny. O- Orson Welles is done by uh, Maurice. Lamar, yeah, yeah, is that Lamar, his Lamar, I Lamar or something. Yeah, yeah. I apologize, but he does a lot it's of great terrible. voices. But his best one is <laughs> doing Orson Welles. It's like full of uh, it was somebody's. <laughs> see, he was doing ads for a peas, <laughs> full of country goodness and green penis, and he goes, "Wait, that's terrible. I quit." <laughs> This is great, guys. Thank you so much. No problem, Carly. I'm going to put you on hold, and you, know, you get a copy of Animaniacs Wacko Wish, Wacko's Wish, first time on DVD. There, uh, we got a. We're running out of time. We only got a few minutes here, Matt. Let's see who else should we go to here. Phone lines are full. Let's talk to Sean in Toronto. Sean, do you work in radio? Hey, what's that, guys? Sorry about that. Do you, Do you work in radio? I do actually, yes. Where in, uh, you're in Toronto? Where in uh, Toronto do you work in radio? Uh, one of the larger stations there. Don't want to give it out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, not particularly. But you now, tell me now. W- does it start with a C? Yes, it does. Okay, they all do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so WKRP, did you guys grow up watching that? I did. Um, for me, it, I grew when when you could understand television. I guess you reach that right. age of four or five. The show had was just ending or had ended, but they had it in syndication. So I would watch right. it. Uh, I believe Channel Five or Channel Eleven here in New York had it. My mother loved that show, and I would watch it with her. So a lot of my recollection is is kind of sitting down with her and watching it, and and you know. So I did watch it, but again, it was it was mostly in syndication. It wasn't live. By the One time of the earliest it. moments I have with my dad is I remember him watching the show, and I think it was in the first season. It was an episode where Les Nesman is trying to say Chichi Rodriguez, the golfer, <laughs> yeah. and he says Chai Chai Rodriguez. <laughs> and my dad, I don't remember my dad laughing so hard. <laughs> At the fact that he couldn't say Chi-Chi Rodriguez. <laughs> well, here, here's one for you, and it's so apropos because, you know, the, your Thanksgiving holidays on the way. But uh, Les Nesman's standing out doing a remote, and um, they're about to uh, hand out turkeys. And uh, they, so it's Herb, Mr. Carlson, and Les. And uh, Herb, and his, Herb and Mr. Carlson are up in the helicopter, and they're releasing turkeys. Yeah, and, and, I and the, mo- the, the commentary from Les was incredible. Just, oh I, my goodness, they're coming yeah. down like bombs! And then at the end of the episode, he, how they close the episode, he goes, I swear, you know, on my life, God, I honestly I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> and if you ever watch anything that has a retrospective of the golden age of television, that scene represents WKRP every time. Absolutely. So, um, so classic. We're running out of time here, Sean. Uh, best of luck to you in Canadian radio. Maybe you'll make it down to New York one day. We'd <laughs> love to have you down here. Um, I'm going to give you a copy of uh, WKRP. Is that cool? Absolutely, my friend. All right, I'm going to so, put you on hold. Sorry to cut you off. We're running out of time here. Line four for Sean. Uh, let's try to get somebody else in before we leave. Uh, I'm just reading phone lines yeah. here now. Um, what about, uh, pick one. What about line six? Line six. Let's go to Eddie in Long Island. You're an animation student. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's man. going on, Eddie? Um, I just want, first, before I get to my point real quick, do you guys remember the Space Ghost Coast to Coast with Bjork? Yes. Oh, now that you God. mention it, I remember it. I, I don't think, I don't remember specifics about it, but I do remember the episode. Oh, my God. Where Space Ghost is, like, married to her and yeah. back and forth. <laughs> oh, and I love that. I gotta seek that show out now. Yeah, it's great, dude. But um, just real quick, I mean, I'm an animation student right now, and uh, we try to keep tabs on all the new stuff that's coming out here and there. 
I mean, I think it's kind of sad that a lot of this old, like every every feature length film that comes out now is you know 3D since Toy Story pretty much. Right. right. But um, you know, I keep my I try to keep my eye out for good stuff, and there's not a lot of good stuff on TV nowadays. But one good show that's like came out of nowhere is this show called Clarence on Cartoon Network. I don't know if you guys have seen it. No. Oh my God! It's 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 almost like a take on a kid in the '90s. Almost. I mean, that's not the gimmick, but it gets that feel to it. You know, where the kids are always outside, and it's really crazy, like interactions between parents and kids. And I don't know, it's crazy. But the uh, the producer or creator of that show just got in this huge legal battle where he was like, I don't know. I think he was like sexually harassing a lot of people at his work. Oh, and, like, this Whole big thing happened. So now they're going to stop production of the show, but. I don't know, you guys should check that out. But just as an animation student, I can just see, you know, over the last 10, 15 years especially, like the decline in, in quality alone of cartoons, you know? Because, I mean, I still, you know, check out what's on here and there, and it's just there's nothing out there anymore, you know? Have you ever checked out Gravity Falls or Phineas and Ferb, Betty? Gra Gravity Falls is great. I love Gravity Falls. Awesome that's show. Another, that's like, but that's what I'm saying. That's like one, it's hard to pick out more than a handful of shows now out of the myriad of stuff that's out there that's even worth looking at. But Gravity Falls is great. Yep. Eddie, we're running out of time, but if uh, you're looking at new animation, my, my last question to you, what do you think of the style that Archer does? Our, I, I really like Archer. I love the guy who does his voice. Um, H. John Benjamin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It always reminds me of, like, home movies and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, because like, he was uh, coach. Burgers. Yeah, home, yeah. Uh, Bob's Burgers, uh, Dr. Katz, he was on yep. there. Yeah, that was great, yeah. But do you like that style yeah. of animation? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the animation now is going to, like, that Flash style, where it's, like, kind of, you know, every, like, Adult Swim kind of pioneered that stuff. Where right, it's like, yeah. You know, but, I mean, I, I do. I enjoy it. Th those, those shows really, you know, they're really dependent on the writing, and the writing of that show is just so great that, you know, it could be in any style, in my opinion. But I do enjoy that style, totally, yeah. Well, Eddie, thank you for calling, and let me take you back to the old school where it's so cool, and I'm going to give you a copy of Animaniacs and learn a little bit of animation history. Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to put you on hold, Eddie, on line six there. We are running out of time. My apologies to Hugh Wilson. We'll have to get to him next week. Uh, creator of WKRP. There's a lot of interesting stuff there, I, I promise you, especially if you're any kind of talk radio fan or music radio fan. You're going to want to hear what this guy has to say because he pretty much you know, wrote the book of what 70s and 80s radio was doing without 70s and 80s radio wanting you to know right. what was going on. He pulled back the, uh, the curtain and showed you everything that was going on here. Uh, uh, we are out of time. Next week on the program, we're going to have my buddy Brian Shea from VideoGameWriters.com. He's going to be in with, uh, or he's calling in, sorry, with the Holiday Gaming Guide, letting you know what to get uh, your significant others, your kids, maybe your fathers, Yourself. or tell everybody else what you should want for uh, for the holidays there. He's going to be in. Plus, I'm going to have some reviews of my own Ooh. as I'm going to try to uh, get back into the world of gaming this week. I got a copy of a game called The Wolf Among Us. Right. And I've got uh, the advances of Tales from the Borderlands, the animated oh. series. So I'm going to watch those. I love Borderlands. That and, whole universe uh, is so fascinating to me. Well, Chad Duke's got me uh, Borderlands 1 and right. 2, and I want to play them. I just haven't had time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to force myself to sit down, open them up, and play them. I know you like them. You've got a couple of pieces yep. uh, sitting in your office there, which are pretty cool. So we'll talk about that. Also, WWE 2K15. I would like to review that. I didn't get a copy, but <laughs> you know it comes out November 18th. Right. Maybe I'll have one by then, uh, Xbox One, because I heard and saw that the... Xbox 360 and the PS3 versions are not good. Are garbage. They left yeah. a lot out and just made it bare bones so that they could push PS4 and Xbox well, but One. But that kind of makes sense. I don't fault them for doing that at this point. No. Yeah, we Once again, we didn't get to a lot of the stuff. No, we have half here. the stuff on we our We didn't talk sheet. about the Doctor Who finale. Uh, we didn't talk about the Geek Flea Market. We didn't talk about uh, Black Friday, but we can do that next week. We can. And, we can talk uh, about all of this stuff. Comic Con Christmas. I don't know what to do. We have all this stuff to give away, and we got to figure out a way to do it on the air here. So we're going to be uh, I'm telling you, mulling that over. If you have any ideas, e -rock uh, sorry, e -rock comment at gmail.com. I think it's a number system like an advent calendar. Pick a number from the ad, and, and then and then you get something from behind door number X. Okay, that's what I, that's my thought. Well, we got to get out of here. E Rock Radio on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Geek Stuff OG from Matt on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll be back next week. Same time, same channel. Batman. Batman. Yes. Uh, on here on Opie Radio. Till next time. Be seeing ya.